A group created by and for the community itself, this organisation is engaging the community in a shared vision. Please put your hands together for shaping our future from the Queenstown Lakes District. Picture, if you will, a mayor's office anywhere in New Zealand, present day. Our hero bravely meets a day full of ratepayer queries, complaints and suggestions. Mia here. Good morning, Your Worship. Thank you for taking my call. I just had a quick question for you about the wisdom of Council's latest action, or lack of action, should I say, on the abominable parking situation in Wanaka. I mean, really. Where is a local supposed to park when you let tourists overrun our district, taking all the prime parking spaces and clogging up New World? And don't get me started on the lack of infrastructure to support those new flights coming into Queenstown Airport. And what is the Ministry of Education up to anyway after their so-called consultation period last year? With the incredible growth in our region, what Wanaka needs is a new school and we need it now. Well, thanks for your question. Uh, Gosh, where to start? You got mail. Ooh. Dear Mayor, I'm a long-time ratepayer and resident, and I'd like to know what Council was thinking when you approved the construction of a new bridge across the Kawara River, so close to the old one. What happened to those fantastic ideas for a new ferry service, or traffic bypass closer to Frankton? And with the outlandish growth of those mega shopping malls out at Five Mile, the whole place is starting to look like... Uh, America. Free market economy and capitalism be damned. What we need to do is shut the door, close the door to future development, and keep the influx of new people out. Well, setting aside the economic development potential benefits of financial investment in the region, NZTA actually makes decisions about roading and bridges. Hello, hello, are you still oh. there? I hope I haven't lost your attention, Mayor, because I still want to talk about the lack of adequate low-cost housing in the district. How are we ever going to help families who struggle to make ends meet with the exorbitant cost of living we all face? And while speaking of new residents and visitors, I'm sure they're the ones to blame for the sewage trouble we've had along our beaches. I mean, how hard is it for a council to manage basic infrastructure like sewage? Dirty nappies and grease on the beach would not be a good look. And I just don't know where to go with my perfectly valid questions. I've tried writing letters to the editor, I've accosted my local councillors, and now I'm calling you. There, there must, must be a, a better, better way. way! I have a dream. <laughs> of a community engagement process that gains people's input in a productive and constructive way. I have a dream of having a voice in how my district plans for its future. And I have a dream of a sustainable future for our children and grandchildren. I know. Let's start with visioning workshops held throughout the district. Meeting with hundreds, no, no thousands of residents, asking them to decide, to, to tell us what the future would look like for their children and their children's children. Once we have a community-created vision, we could identify a set of priorities to address mm -hmm. with a series of facilitated public forums, which give everyone a chance to voice their opinions. And then we could recruit volunteers for task forces on each topic, comprising interested residents and experts who could conduct further research and develop recommendations for implementations by the appropriate agencies and build in a key step of accountability by conducting another round of community forums to check on progress. And this process could be independent of local government, facilitated by volunteer steering groups of community leaders who engage as broadly as possible throughout the district. We, we have, have a dream. dream. Give every, every person in the, in the community, community a, a voice today, today to, to shape, shape the our future. future. This process today and tomorrow night is about the community talking and listening together and coming up with what they think 
are the big things that need to be tackled to shape the future. So we need to now think about, well, what can we do so that in 20 or 30 years' time, those people who come after will say the same thing about the foresight and thought that went into the work that came out of this process. So that's what today is all about. What I want you to do is your first exercise is to think about 2035, somewhere a long way in the future, not next year, not you know, the next annual planning process, somewhere where your children or grandchildren will be enjoying the fruits of what's happened. What might the local paper's headline be to reflect an outstanding success, to reflect that this process really did achieve what it set out to do, which was to shape a great future. Where do we want to go and what are the issues and challenges that need to be addressed in order for us to get there? I'm just going to give you literally just five minutes to do this. So have a chat, have a think. And the people of the Queenstown Lakes District made their dream a reality. In 2011, our visioning workshops gained input from over a thousand residents, creating a vision of spectacular environments, enterprising people, exceptional solutions, and 10 priorities to address. Throughout the communities of the district, people now know that if they have something to say, the Shaping Our Future process will make sure they are heard. The public forums gather input broadly. The smaller task forces further research and develop ideas from which specific recommendations for action are made. We have facilitated this loop for priorities related to energy, economic development, tourism, events, conservation, innovation and transport. We have seen decisions made by council, regional tourism organisations and chamber of commerce that are direct results of the shaping our future process. For example, the regional tourism organisations now meet regularly to manage tourism growth. Event funding has been directed towards the shoulder seasons to reduce congestion and increase economic opportunity. Shaping our future recommendations were adopted into last year's district plan review. Conservation ideas have gone to the Otago Regional Council. This is a process that is so simple, yet so effective. When you do it well, Everyone in the district becomes a volunteer. We have gained great momentum over the last five years, yet there is much potential to come. The beauty of shaping our future is its simplicity. It enables collect collaborative community conversation and inspires action. And you can do it too. It's a process that's easily replicated. Give every person in the community a voice today to shape our future. That's our dream. We encourage every district to share our dream. And together, we can shape the future of Aotearoa New Zealand. Thank you. Thank you.